All right, I did my couple bits of cheating. And, uh... Learned. Can I put this away so I'm not still using it? <clears throat> Learned what I probably should be doing. Well, I suppose that means since I know what I need, I should go out here first. Anyway, I don't have the right way to activate that door there yet. And I need to, uh, in that whole saber thing, and the walls in the smoking room, that's the room beyond it. No, so that's the little bit I read. I don't know why it said smoking room, though. So that's probably what confused me the other time. What I'm going to do right now, do the other thing I accidentally saw. Just to use the bow and arrow. Why is that door open? I swear I keep closing it. I keep, I swear I closed it before. No, oh, is it closed? No, it's not closed. Close it. Don't need scary basement doors open. Did I leave my lantern in there? I wonder if it's still going down. Or if it pauses when you're out of the room. Let's see what it's at. Eighty-four. Maybe it did pause when I left the room. That's conveniently weird. Oh crud. <laughs> well, that's lame. Let's see what it's at. It's possible it was off while I was out of the room. I don't think there's any reason for me to go upstairs again. I got all these goofy books I don't really need. Let's finish off with them. Uh... If You know what, just in case the game actually pays attention to what you've gone through. Uh there we go. Let's not not read that other book. The uh, one which makes me twist up and get all messed over. I kind of feel like books don't take up your inventory, but possible they do. One. A lot of books. Close this dang door again. I just don't like it being there. It's a scary door. <clears throat> Alrighty, so save. One. Actually, let's call this one, uh, F. They got that lamp so we could actually see. Okay, so that boat, that arrow guy didn't shoot at me that time. That's good. 
And yes, I read, by mistake, honest, that you could use this arrow to fight back, bow and arrow to fight back. So I wonder, if you didn't have this bow and arrow, or you wasted your three arrows already, would you be screwed over? Need to work on my marksmanship. Did I hit it? Looks like it. Oh, I'll leave this bow and arrow by the once Indian painting. Really? We're just gonna have a lame camera view? There we go. First, let's uh, search. Then let's leave this stuff here. After seeing if we could look out these windows. Unfortunately, have no scary monsters jump out at us. Look at these cool camera angles they have. So many multiple ones for this corridor. Alright, let's take a look at these paintings if we can. So there's the rocks. There's the... Dark Man, maybe? This is supposed to be a painting of Descartes. Alright, let's leave, uh... All this stuff. Play all this stuff on me in the bow and arrow. And I don't really need it. I don't need a... Oh, that had no space because it's vertical. It's interesting that they don't just have a... designated spot that they have to think about the uh, dimensions of what you're placing to. But anywho, before we go in that door, what about this one right here? Is that the double? Yeah, it is. It looks like a single door. I just had to be sure. Alrighty, let's see what's up with this room. There's gonna be another doggy, isn't there? <clears throat> this time I'm not gonna close the door. Maybe I'll have to rush out. That's it, the book. The bed looked giant at this angle. There's a ton of bedrooms in this game. And no messed up dog, that's good. Watch them all jump through those, uh, <clears throat> all jump through those windows now. It's a fake book. Gee golly, I wonder what I do with that. Bad dog. Well, I don't want you too close to the secret entrance I'm going to be going through when I have to come back through it. Maybe follow me back here first. that it was obvious there's a secret door there just based on how oh nice and there's a sign on the ground able to protect myself there according to that one book I believe bad spirits can't come in here 
it's not dark in here. Found a dagger, nice. The two dead. What the heck? <sighs> okay. Like infinity things there. bad thing. Not a fan of that sound. Well, let's read all this stuff and then see that picking up this talisman was a bad idea. Ludwig Prien. Nomine invocatoris, si non sanctificatus es, cave. De vermis mysteriis non absolvo folem legendum fatum et eum versus. Tibi magnum inominandum signa stellarum nigrarum et... So, I'm not really up to snuff with my Latin, but that means something. Yeah. Cave, night, stars. Uh. Nomine invoc. <sighs> wow. I did not save after going in there. All right. Well. Hey, ghost, follow me over here again. Good ghost, nice ghost. Let's try this again. First of all, let's put away the lamp. Let's save. And have a nice look see again. Let's go ahead and save once more. Oh, it's this gold one that killed me. So let's read it again. Aw, oh, couldn't hear my scream because of the, uh... The, uh, talisman noise. So let's read the other book. Juan Luis Jorge. De Biblioteca, Reflections on the Power of the Verb in Certain Texts, Archaeos Publications, 1919, Stafford. Translation does not alter the occult power contained within such forbidden texts. The malevolent energy is in no way diminished. The spell must be cast aloud and clearly in certain languages or little-known dialects. Maglafach Fathang. Just dang it. Am I going to die again? The reader will understand that, in the light of these revelations, I would be foolhardy to continue quoting from the text I have before me. If spoken aloud in its entirety, it would surely awaken powerful and malignant forces. Translation does not alter the occult. Okay, so you have to speak the it. Reader Reading will it is that okay. In the light of these, I will go further and say that simple reading of some of the more technical passages describing specific practices is in itself a perilous exercise. The ill prepared reader can easily fall prey to attacks of demented hysteria 
not unlike those described in cases of individuals said to be possessed by evil spirits. Yeah, I've seen that firsthand uh, after I've read a couple of these. I recommend the study made by Zempf, Urbain, Grandier, and Loudon, and the reports made by the Reverend Richard Price concerning a number of astonishing, to say the least, exorcisms carried out in a parish near Providence. Given what I have written, we must be grateful to the librarians of the British Museum who have never allowed consultation of the work of Al-Azib's startling work, the infamous Necronomicon. Thunder, lightning, or cow. Copies of that work do exist in spite of the zeal of book-burning inquisitors. For proof, we need look no further than the British Museum, of course, and the sealed archives of the Miskatonic University in Arkham. And also this library probably, Muhaha. Other examples of books whose evil can be unleashed by any thoughtless reader are von Jutz's von Unersprechlichen Kulten and the abominable De Vermis Mysteries by Ludwig Prin, whose sordid death should be a lesson to all those tempted by a study of the occult. And that's the book I, the gold book I read and die instantly from reading. Yep. If I read this first, I would totally know not to read it, right? No, I wouldn't. The Sacrificial Dagger, Otto Stern, Lumina Books. The importance placed on ritual sacrifice is constant in religious cult practice. Propitiating the gods is a theme common to many religions. The Old Testament affords many examples. Primitive polytheistic belief systems integrate sacrifice in their rituals as part of the recurrent process of reaffirmation and, naturally enough, group cohesion. The members of their social and religious community come together in an act of purification and atonement. It would be erroneous to imagine the act of human sacrifice, linking priest, offering and God, C.F. Manzetti, Stone Cults, as anything less than a vital focusing of the group's faith. The act also ensures the continuing appeasement of the God but only if practiced by a recognized officiating priest using the appropriate instrument. Good thing I have the dagger now. Studies made concerning primitive religious groups bear witness to the central role of sacrifice in living ritual. My own work in the field of ethnopsychology brought me into contact with a sorcerer living in the region of Arkham. He introduced me to the rite of steel, linked to a ceremony known as adoring the black goat of the woods with a thousand youngs. The god, being adored, is known as the vagabond. Hmm. Here, the dagger's roll, which allows the life breath to pass from one dimension to another, is essential. The Vagabond is a frightening figure, being able to move where he wants and to kill those who have displeased the Goat Guard, for whom he acts as a go-between. The Goat is clearly a fertility god. The priest, having spoken the invocation, must choose the appropriate dagger for the sacrifice. Here, the dagger's role my own work in the field of ethnopsychology. The vagabond is a frightening figure, being able to move where he wants and to kill those who have displeased the goat guard, for whom he acts as a go-between. The knife with a sinusoidal blade that must be dipped seven times on night when the moon is full, in water that has been distilled a hundred times, will be laid aside since it would send the vagabond back into his own dimension. 
Uh-huh. See illustration. Maybe I could use that against the uh, goofy ghost spirit thing. I'm going to go for my own wires here. One sec. Okay, so dipped in water. We'll be laid aside. All right. The priest will rather choose the dagger with a curved blade. That is more appropriate for slitting of the lamb's throat. This act transfigures the sorcerer priest and plunges the assembled worshippers into a divine trance. The knife with a sinusoidal blade that must be dipped seven times on night. The so weird knife curvy a one is good for that must be dipped seven times beating the vagabond. This the one is will rather choose the dagger with a curved blade. That is more this appropriate. The appropriate one for the sacrifice, throat. all right. Looks to oh, there's a third one. Okay. So I do have the, the curvy knife. one. The priest will the wiggly one. The curvy the one. Will rather... I'm not sure I have. So there's the wiggly. That doesn't look anything special. The priest will. I don't think I have it. I just have. Of course, I'm not sure I want to have that one because that's the one that's for the sacrifice. This one is supposed to. Get rid of the vagabond. So that's the one I want. All right, let's save. And read this other parchment. The Book of Yael. Signs of Stone. Eucharistic Rituals of Forbidden Cults. Texts collated by Monsignor Vache, legate in the Curia of the Vatican. Numerous devilish cults speak of monstrous creatures called the Old Ones. These supernatural beings are believed to be possessed of powers equivalent to those of the gods of antique religions. Adepts of such cults refer to forbidden literature in order to cause these frightful entities to appear before them. What serious student of folk myths has not come across the names of Cthulhu and Shub Nigurath? It must be said that these creatures wield tremendous power and are difficult to control once they have been unleashed into the world. Those who serve he who goes in shadows protect themselves with signs of stone carved into the walls of houses or engraved on various objects. Like that talisman. For those misguided servants of evil, the best protection appears to be that afforded by the sign of the most ancient gods. Engraved in Menar stone, a heavy material said to be disagreeable to the touch. Why was that capitalized? The sinful practices of those who fall into such errors can only lead to the darkest of despair and are a mortal danger to the soul. Such monsters as those invoked by these foolhardy individuals are engendered when reason drops its guard. 
man is easily tempted into perversion. It is why we must forever remain alert and renounce Satan with each breath we take. His ways are infinite in number. Alrighty, well, I didn't really learn anything new here. As in where, what I'm supposed to do next. Apart from maybe trying to kill that ghost in the other room. and try fighting it with the weekly attacker. Oh yeah. So dark in here, sure is. All right, well, let's see if we could fight this other ghost. That capital Z is weird. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Well, maybe I am. supposed to do. Probably have to sort out the dancing room. But they didn't react to either record. We don't accidentally break this dagger or some nonsense.
All right, let's try this again. So let's play this record. So I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I know to go is down in the uh, basement in that cavern. I swear I'm messing up something with those dancing ghosts. So I'm gonna ch cheat. Take a look, see. See you all later. All right. So I did look online for what to do, and. Uh, well, why is there a red thing floating right there now? It was white before. This is just a graphical glitch, but anyway. I looked online and, uh... Apparently, I'm supposed to push that clock in that bedroom by the Indian painting. Why am I moving so weird? I think I was getting that weird, uh, input issue. <sighs> Come on, what's up with this? <sighs> my character's not reacting to my button presses properly. Hey, right, whatever. Seems to be working now, maybe. Anyway, that clock, I'm supposed to push it. In that one bedroom. How was I supposed to know this? Um, not entirely sure. Oh, also, your health could go above uh, 20. So let me eat those biscuits. Do I still have the biscuit box on hand? No, it's gone. And by the way, that heavy statue thing does encumber you more than other stuff. Let me go ahead and save again. <clears throat> so they have like, each item has a certain amount of encumbrance. I thought it would be otherwise. Anyway, the other thing to do is also search this cabinet in here, which I haven't done. more health, right? I'm sorry, I'm playing a game that's just hard for me to think and talk at the same time. But anyway, about the clock in the bedroom, uh, apparently you're supposed to push it, find a secret passage, and the only thing I found when I searched clock, nope, uh, just find in a webpage listing all the game documents, apparently in the intro with the, the girl, instead of the man, she mentions a clock. An ancient upstairs clock. That's the only place it's mentioned. So, that's your only hint to push that clock, I guess. Or by looking online. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to bring up the, uh... oil lamp. So I've learned how to search... A room that is dark. Oh, 
by placing a lamp down. So let's see if I could find anything else in here. Cool. I think I already looked at this cabinet in the dark. better. Let's put the lamp away. Why'd I come all the way around? All oh, right, because I wanted to pick up the health and such. Let's drop some things here. The box. Let's just get rid of the regular knife. Is it the regular knife? I thought there was another dagger that looked just like it. It's kind of weird. The other dagger's probably useless. Ah. That's a lot of health. I do like that it has his name on it, but I'm sure it's probably useless. Still, I'll keep it for now. Drop this. Anything else I really don't need? Probably this book. Still, I'll hold it for the moment. When I find another instance to start dropping things, I'll drop all that stuff. Let's see, five. I've never tried the P button. It's supposed to pause. Because I can't see on my keyboard very well. There we go. Uh, you can unpause. Oh, I have to push space, maybe. But hey, look, it's a clock. Let's push it. You barely see a crack behind it. So it wasn't even obvious to do anything. I searched it, and that didn't work. So huzzah for the game hiding stuff that I totally missed. I definitely need to look that up online, otherwise I would have just been flailing around. The Creatures of Night by Hubertus the Bald, translated from Latin by his brother in prayer, Fratre Johann Marcus. Of monstrosity. You who read me know that night engenders monsters and that night creatures exist. The accursed book of Abdul al Hazred is clear on this matter. That is not dead which can eternal lie. Unhappy he who knows that book. Unhappy he whose eyes alight upon that foulest of texts. Unhappy he who implores the standing stones, for he will free the powers of darkness. Of the pit. Stagnant waters are like the memory of men. Beneath the surface calm, Clawed beasts await, and are known to initiates as the Deep Ones. Awaiting his prey, the Deep One seizes him and drags him down to the abyss. 
where Dagon, the cruel god, swims and reveres him whose name may not be pronounced. Of libraries, unhappy he who frees the prowler, unhappy he who meets the prowler erring among the books. He generates the vagabond that comes from other spheres. He believes the vagabond does not exist. I sent the vagabond back to where whence he came. Of the pit. Awaiting his prey, the deep one seizes him and drags him of life. He will feel the embrace of death, for in the eyes of the vagabond, books are no more than dreams, stone no more than wind. The vagabond knows how to take the breath of the reckless, of, of the pit. No, I wonder if uh, this is the thing I saw the pit. when I went uh, through the basement door. Of of strife. He who speaks does not know, and believes he is able to kill the creatures of the night. Folly. Evil is conjured up by science and secrecy. Are we just I'm not going to finish our sentences? He who speaks does not know and believes he is able to kill the creatures of the night. Folly! Evil is conjured up by science and secrecy. Be he who prowls among books will perish by the blade. He who flies in the dark caverns will scream in fear. He who swims in the depths will evaporate. But he... Oh, see, we just had to wait a bit longer. Of death, tramps. He who prowls among books will perish by the blade. Okay. He who flies in the dark caverns will scream in fear. He who swims in the depths will evaporate. But he who believes he knows, knows nothing. He who knows says nothing. Of strife. He who speaks does not know and believes so he is. Flies in the dark caverns will scream in fear. Swims in the depths Falling. will evaporate. Evil is. I'm not sure how. He who prowls among I mean, I got rid of the books by the knife. I don't know about of screaming and evaporating. He who speaks of death. There are domains more terrible than death. That is not dead which can eternal lie. Each creature is conjured up and is not dead, but returns to the origins. A monster, a science. Steel kills the vagabond who never dies. Are we just repeating ourselves now? So we sent the vagabond back with steel, yes. Translator's note. Here ends the manuscript of Hubertus, who died in the library of the convent of Teruella in the year of our Lord, 1666. Six, six, six. Andreas got in pace. All right, cool. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, there's backstory. I do like, like it when games have books. It's also cool that they're reading it to us. Okay, so we have that key. Could probably open up the way in this smoking room now, huh? Why am I going the long way? Whatever. All right, let's drop more things on the ground. I 
don't believe I'll need probably all these books and stuff, but something we obviously won't need. Nothing that I can see clearly. So we won't worry about it yet. So yeah, this is the only locked door I know of now. Oh, did we take the saber? The spoilers. We need the saber in this next room. Not where the saber is. Dang it. You're not a saber. Did I leave it in the smoking room? Yes. Doesn't this look pleasant? It's probably finally the book I need. like a cabinet. Yeah, I see drawers in it. Just try again on the edge where the drawers are just in case. Nope. There's a mechanism to trigger. I think before I do that, let's take care of the uh, dancing room. of death. get a search here. I'm just going to leave them to it. Why the thunder? God.
I mean, they'd be kind of dumb if that key just opened up that door, but it's worth a check. It is fairly strange, though, that, uh... Okay. It's like I'm running short on stuff. But it is strange that that door doesn't open is what I'm trying to say. Well, I am going to... Get rid of a lot of these documents. Oh, I didn't read this yet. The Tale of Captain J.W. Norton of the Army of the Union. I'm here the new year. 1862. The South was in collapse. Louisiana was open to us. I had each day to requisition victuals for our troops, and was aided in this endeavor by a score of brave men. Rebels were not yet ready to lay down their arms. The region was far from safe. I headed further and further west and questioned many freed slaves. From them, I learned of a plantation on the coast. Its name was Dersetto. We received a less than hearty welcome. Only Pickford, the owner, behaved in a friendly manner. While my men counted cattle and grain reserves, I learned what I could from him. Man was most unusual and possessed an extraordinarily cultured mind. At nightfall, I gave orders for the men to bivouac at Dersetto. Pickford invited my second-in-command, Lieutenant Patterson, and myself to dine. And our host proved a most entertaining conversationalist. While coffee was being served, Patterson went to inspect the men's camp. The cigar Pickford offered me was so acrid that my head began to spin. I remembered campfire tales of fellow officers trapped by devilish Confederate tricks. My mind floated in a foul and dense fog from which emerged the enlarged and deformed face of Pickford. He grinned at me. Patterson's return chased off the nightmare. I heard shouts and firing from outside and found the strength to take out my revolver. I fired three shots. Pickford fell to the floor. Patterson then helped me out of the burning house. The air was filled with smoke. We resembled a company in disorderly retreat. I saw slaves leaping into the flames of that inferno. They were trying to save Pickford's life. What the heck? And our host proved a most entertaining conversationalist. While caught, I remembered campfire tales of fellow officers trapped by devilish Confederate. Patterson's return chased off the nightmare. I heard shouts and firing from outside. Okay, whatever. So I guess my revolver. apparently he was possibly Carfire being poisoned. Of course, Pickford was a messed up floor. individual, so... Then... But that did uh, describe um, what happened in this house, though, I guess. Why it burned down, because someone else was talking about the burning. And my keys are not being responsive again. There we go. Still aren't. I wonder what causes this. No, it's seriously messed up. Maybe to the point that I need to give up. No, there we go. Still doing it. Maybe we're safe now. I'm not going to uh, give up uh, the fact that it might be my wireless keyboard I'm using. Possibly dying? Maybe. But it seems like the, the actions are happening later. 
Come on. Alright, fine. Let me try my other keyboard. That's wired. It seems to be working just fine. Now uh, back to the wireless. <laughs> Don't know. Alright, anywho. Let's not drop stuff in this far off room. Let's drop everything in the, uh, what's probably going to lead to the caves. Let's have searched every room in the house. Let's go back to this altar room. And let's see, drop things maybe over here. I'll just keep this just in case I come across another dagger that I need to identify. Unlikely I don't need the gramophone or the records. Did I already leave the gramophone in the other room? I guess so. I try using one just in case. Yeah. Probably don't need the flask, but I'll hold on to it for now. All right. And one other spoiler. I did read that it's possible for you to, uh, not be able to use your rifle as opposed to your revolver. So I'll use my rifle first if I find any more enemies. Well, this, uh, C. And... I don't see the partial. I guess once you put the whole thing in, it shows it. What? And now that I blocked the way to my items, Possibly. Well, here we go. Escape. Save. One. I am going to run, because I'm sure that's going to fall. Maybe I'm supposed to not run and jump at a point, huh? You know, let's just walk normally. If it falls apart before we get across, so be it. That was worth happening. <laughs>